when we started really like doing this work and having kids come in and meeting families, we were like, oh my goodness, this is much bigger and the need is much greater than just, hey, they need a safe place to hang out. All right, looks like we are rolling. So it is my uh, privilege and honor to do a Shine Brightly podcast again. It's been several weeks since I've since I've done one last, but excited to talk to everyone this morning that's out there, but also to talk to this young lady here, Lindsay, which we're going to find out all sorts of cool stuff about what they're doing. But first, just wanted to say welcome to all of you that are watching in our Shine Brightly podcast. We, we love uh, the community that's been developing around this podcast and Give, Send, Go and all that's happening with our company. It's been amazing to see the journey God's put us on as an organization now in over 85 countries and seeing people fundraise all around the world for uh, amazing things, bring, bringing community together to make a difference. And then as a platform for us to share our hope with people in the midst of those journeys. So very exciting stuff, very exciting times. Thanks for tuning in and following us and sharing this podcast and inviting other people to watch. Um, there's great things in store and we have great guests on like Lindsay. So with that said, um, as I typically do, is I direct people to your Give, Send, Go link, Lindsay, so that people can read about it there and they can engage with it. And then we're going to just jump into who you are and how you came to know about Give, Send, Go, all these other different things. But first off, everybody, if you're if you're preparing yourself to find out more about what we're going to talk about, you can go to givesendgo.com forward slash Austin 17 house. And that's with the numbers one seven. So it's Austin like Texas, Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N, the number 1717 house, H-O-U-S-E, Austin 17 house, give, send, go.com forward slash Austin 17 house. So that's the campaign link. That's the campaign URL. I can see that you've uh, raised a decent amount of money now, almost $21,000. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when you begin, a couple hundred givers and people sharing and, and praying for the campaign. So Lindsay, now to you, I've just been speaking for all, you know, the, these couple of minutes, but I would love to, you know, we briefly chatted before we were started recording um, about one, that you had a connection to my family, which was, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool that, you know, some of the many siblings in the Wells tribe of, of 12 children, um, which is super cool. But why don't you tell us about this? organization that you're a part of and what your role is with it, Austin 17 House. I, just by the name, thought it was in Austin, Texas. I didn't know that you even affiliated with people that we knew, but so it's not in, it's not in Austin, Texas. No, <laughs> <laughs> Grand New Hampshire. <laughs> okay. You're in New Hampshire. That's, and what's your, what's your function and role with the organization? Yeah, so I am the executive director here at Austin House. We've been around for seven years now, and I started out as a volunteer in the beginning for the first few years getting it started, and then in the fall of 2021, we finally got some money in that I could make the jump over and become a full-time executive director, wow. and so I've been here, um, yeah, since the beginning, seven years. Wow, that's incredible. So- you said Southern New Hampshire, so this isn't in in Wyndham or Derry. Where where is this in in particular? So we're in Brentwood, New Hampshire. Oh, okay. um, I like to say we're like in the heart of Rockingham County because we're like right in the middle. Right. Uh, so we're right on 125. People pass us all day long, and um, we got a really great location. Um, we serve a lot of different people all over the region, okay. so it's great all over like you know, the mass border all the way up to Summersworth and everything in between. Um, so even though we're in Brentwood, a lot of the families and things that we serve are outside of Brentwood. Okay. Well, that, that's cool to know. So when I looked at your campaign before we started and everything, you have a really cool video that 
outlines in your campaign, all of the things that you guys do at Austin 17 House. And I was floored. I was like, mm -hmm. this is like, this is a, it, when I was in the military, we would have rec centers and they would have a music room and a weight room and like some various things you could do stuff. And I was like, this is like 10 times better than that. It has those things, but even more like training, practical stuff for kids to be involved in. Mm -hmm. You must have a, a pretty big building or location. I mean, what what is it that you guys were, is this something that you rent, that you own? Like, how did you guys come to to land yourself in this spot? Yeah, so um, when we first got started in 20, uh, 2017, Mark, who's mm -hmm. the founder of Austin House, wanted to provide a safe place for his friend, uh, his son's friend. So Austin was a 17-year-old boy, um, hence Austin 17 House, who passed away in a drug-related drug car accident with another girl. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the community, there was actually quite a bit of loss that was happening. The opiate epidemic was now really impacting a lot of other people that weren't just, you know, your typical like homeless people or, you know, like the stigma surrounding all of that. We were actually losing kids and it was really devastating. And so Mark wanted to create a safe place for Austin's friends. And so he found an open gymnasium at a church called Grace Ministries International. Um, and the pastor of the church was, you know, just really blown away by Mark's heart and his vision to create a safe place and gave us access to the gym. So that's where we started. We were just a safe place to come in, play basketball, maybe get a bite to eat. And that was really it. But then when we started really like doing this work and having kids come in and meeting families, we were like, oh my goodness, this is much bigger. And the need is much greater than just, hey, they need a safe place to hang out. And so as we began to develop and meet a lot of the families that were being impacted, we realized there's just not enough places for kids to go. There's not enough places for families to go for resources. So in the back of the building um, used to be a public, uh, sorry, a private school. And funny enough, I actually came to school here. So there's like a little bit of redemption there. <laughs> um, I was in like elementary school here. And then years wow. and years later, it shut down. So the back of the building was vacant. It was a K through 12 school. So there's 13 classrooms, oh office goodness. space everything and so we just kind of like took over and the church was very supportive of us like using the space again because it hadn't been used so we were like oh well what do kids like to do and so like you said you know things like music and art and theater and all of those things we just kind of started developing year after year so now we have the gymnasium space which is still you know kind of like your place you hang out um, we got a lot of support from the Lions Club, Lions International, okay. and they helped yeah. us build a kitchen because we provide meals every night that we're open. Okay. And then the whole Outback space is kind of like where our programs are. So if kids want to check out an activity, they can, and they can be mentored and learn something. Um, like, for example, we have a shop class. So we teach like woodworking and metalworking. So mm -hmm. kids will go and kind of learn some hands-on things, but at the same time, like build relationship with mentors since a lot of the kids that come in are more vulnerable and dealing with all sorts of different issues. And so we're able to really connect with them through the program. So the programs are cool and the activities are cool, but it's really like the relationships and the connections that we've formed um, that have made it so successful. So it's right. 23 acres out back. So we have like trails Ooh. and oh, garden. Gosh. Yeah, we got, we are very blessed. <laughs> seriously i mean that really is incredible I, and i challenge everybody that's watching to go to givesengo.com forward slash austin 17 house and watch the video of all of the things as you were being videoed and walking through the building from place to place i was like this thing is one well, it's humongous but it offers everything Hmm. That I, if I was a, a, a kid that age again, I would be like taking full advantage of like so many cool, <laughs> cool things, impractical things, things that actually in, engage you in the world and practical, useful for living and, and functioning in society. It's like, this is super, super cool. So, so you've got this building, you've got these cool things happening and sounds like you're not 
open seven days a week. You're open uh, specific days. So how does that work? What is the schedule there? Yeah, so we're open four days a week. We're open Tuesday through Friday. Um, our Tuesday activities are after school. Um, however, our staff is in during the day. So we do have kids that'll just bop in and hang out. Um, but Tuesdays specifically are more kind of slow, more like wellness focused. If you need help with tutoring, if you want to like work out, um, if you want to hang out, like that's available to you. Cause it's just the beginning of the week and kids just kind of need a place to chill. And then Wednesdays and Fridays, we offer our creative arts opportunities, which are a lot of our other like, you know, music, theater, art, shop class, um, our gardening stuff. And so kids will come after school and get to hang out with kids and then also participate in the programs. And then, like I said, we always do dinner every night we're open. So we do free meals for our kids and they come and join. And then Thursdays are, um, our fight club days. And so we have a program called fight club 17, which started a few years ago. Again, like I shared in the beginning, uh, when we got started, we were well aware of like the drug epidemic that was plaguing our kids. And right. so it's just gotten worse, especially with like access to substances that they didn't have access to before. Um, and just like the pressures of life. So we actually have a recovery group that meets for youth on Thursdays. Um, we do do that on Tuesdays as well, but Thursdays is primarily just those youth that are impacted that need that safe place to go and get mentorship. So we have that. And then all throughout the year, we have different events that are, that happen on the weekends and things like that. But our primary days are Tuesday through Friday. Okay. Which, which is cool. Cause it seems like I, when I watched the video, I think it had mentioned like two days. So it sounds like you're expanding and growing. Mm -hmm. offering more more options more resources is super cool how do you is it word of mouth that drives people to to coming here how are people finding out about you and what you offer uh so a little bit I mean there's a little bit of both so some of our kids will share with their friends about it and so that's kind of like the word of mouth but uh, since we've opened we've actually had a ton of referrals from different mental health hospitals um, mm. so like Seacoast Mental Health Center, Hampstead Hospital, um, the juvenile probation offices, things like that, um, because we are a safe resource for families, they'll refer families to us and tell them about us. And like the funny thing is, is we're not clinical. We don't have behavioral health counselors or anything like that. We literally just have a bunch of young adults parents, grandparents that care about kids, care about our communities and all love to hang out with them. Um, and so that environment has created one safety, but to a place for these people to heal. And mm -hmm. so when I told them, Hey, just letting you know, like, I just want to make sure, you know, we're not clinical. Like we don't have anything. They're like, well, what you're doing is working. So we're just going to keep sending people to you. And I was like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's fascinating living in the world today is filled with tension and all sorts of different stuff, but the best solutions are the ones that typically are just natural. They're, they are, they're not prescribed. They're not coming through some pharmaceutical industry. In, in, I did a brief study months ago at Thanksgiving on, and this was a study that was published in the, I think it was the British Journal of Medicine, but it was on, gratitude mm. as being one of the the primary ways for combating mental health issues like mm. if you live with just gratefulness and that's something that anyone can teach is like how do you be grateful how do you cultivate gratitude into your life that it hits the very heart of some of the issues that people struggle with where so many of our medical institutions want to just throw drugs at it it's right. like, well, no, you just need some practical living, you know, the, the things that your mentors and your volunteers have, the grandparents and the parents are becoming volunteering their time that they have, even, even things like fasting it doesn't require anything other than you denying yourself actually cures the body of a lot of physical ailments. Like people, people go running after the, uh, the, quick, easy medical solutions, but it's amazing how just the way that God created things 
if you do them in a holistic real way, you find solutions. So it, it doesn't have to necessarily come through some clinical thing. It actually just works. It's pretty right. cool. And that's what you guys are showing, which I think is super, super amazing. I love to hear it. How would you, this is a, this might be a tricky question for you or maybe not, but how would you define success in what you do there at Austin House? Like what is, what is a successful day or year look like? What are there metrics that you track or follow that uh, allow you to say, we are making an impact. This is where we see an impact. Right. So one of the things that does make things kind of difficult in terms of like funding is, you know, grants are always looking for that quantitative data. Right. And so, I mean, it's great. Like, yeah, we have 70 kids on a Wednesday night. Like that's quantitative. That's, that's a great thing to, you know, share that we did. But in terms of like real success, it's like the qualitative data. It's like the quality of our relationships. And so some of the testimonies we have, you know, we had this one girl that came in and she, her name's Amelia. You can read her story on our website and she had tried everything and she was a well-off kid. She grew up in a great home. Um, she had access to everything that she needed. Her parents are, you know, pretty wealthy and she fell into just the spiral of mental illness and addiction and her parents tried everything. They sent her to all like the great, you know, academies, things like that, boarding schools to try to help her and nothing worked. And so one day her mom just desperate was researching on her phone in a doctor's office and came across the Austin house and mm -hmm. decided to drive by. And so they stopped in, I don't even think like we were open that night. Like it wasn't like, you know, a, a activity time. It was right. literally just, we were in the office. And so her mom came in and said, Hey, like, I don't know what else to do. I'm desperate. We don't know what to do. And so this girl ended up coming in and being part of our community and has recently celebrated over a year sober, yeah. um, just being here. And she'll say like, I tried everything. I went to all these different places and nothing worked like mm -hmm. the Austin house did. And I would love to say like, yeah, it's the program, you know, if you're willing to work the program, then it works. We do know that. But it really has been just the people coming and surrounding her and being like, oh, no, like, it's okay, you messed up, like, we can, you know, we can do this, you got this. And just having that person in your corner to be raw, like we were talking about earlier, like, messing up is okay, because like, it's life. And so to have these raw conversations about drugs and not feel condemned, or like, you know, judged for what you're doing and having like, empathy for people um, yeah. has been like that that type of success. And that's many, many kids that come in with social anxiety, their parents are like, I don't know what to do. They don't make friends. They don't know. And then all of a sudden within a few weeks, like they have all these new friends here. They're not as socially awkward. They're the ones like giving tours to new kids, like walking around, you know? So it's like really like the atmosphere that's been cultivated here, which is just out of love has just changed them. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what I would say is success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, just see people coming out. There is no, there is no graduation or anything like that. Right. So, so this is kids of their, are they, they come in, they participate to the extent that they want to participate. And then is there an age limit to, to the ages that you allow to come in and be participants rather than obviously instructors or something like mm -hmm. that? Um, so our target audience is 11 to 18. So that's like middle high school. But because like we do have families that we work with, um, we might get, you know, some siblings that are a little younger um, that will come in. And so, you know, we try to encourage like, hey, maybe come on a Friday night where it's not so crazy because Wednesday nights can be just insane with 50 kids running around in a gymnasium. Yeah. Um, but we also have actual youth. And again, kind of going back to the success, that quality, we actually have youth that end up becoming volunteers. So they kind of like age out necessarily from like the 11 to 18 target, but then they give, are given the opportunity to actually give back to others. And so I would say almost half of our volunteers are actually youth that like came through the, the programs and are now helping and serving to some capacity which is which is super valuable and important for well-being is mm -hmm. not living life just for yourself but finding opportunities to pour back into 
other people and other endeavors. And, and so providing opportunity to volunteer is incredible. How many volunteers does Austin House have? So we have over 50. Wow. And there's a wide range. It's your, you got your 18 year olds and then I got like 80 year olds. So like, we're like a whole family. <laughs> that's incredible. That's a lot of people. I think that is, that's truly, truly amazing. And, and how many people work for, are actually like staff, paid staff for the organization? So we have, I think I have five like paid staff between like administration and then our fight club um, program. We do have a few mentors that we also give stipends to, um, but any mentor that comes in, they have the option. So quite a few of our mentors don't want a stipend. They love to just give. Um, yeah. And then other people do receive a stipend. So I would say maybe like four or five mentors receive stipends. Um, so it's very, very low, which is nice. Yeah. You know, everyone just wanting to give back. Sure. Well, that's, this is really incredible. Again, for those of you that are just tuning in, you need to go back to the beginning, and watch it, but it's givesendgo.com forward slash Austin 17 house, where you can see their fundraising effort. They raised close to $1,000 so far. Uh, I know that you made mention of a website where you could see the story of this young girl. What is that website that pe that you can direct people to or social media platform, whatever? Where are those links that people can connect with you guys? Yeah, so our website is www.austin17house.org. Um, and then we are on Facebook, same thing, Austin 17 House, and we're on Instagram. Uh, so we kind of, you know, let people know like what's happening, what's going on, our success stories, um, our website, you'll find out a lot about of our, our events, how we do things. Um, we're working on a staff page, you know, to get our staff on there so people cool. can learn about who's here uh, and stuff like that. So that's going to be coming up. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much all across the board. <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's great. So all of you out there check out, go like their Facebook page, share it with people. If you're in the area, let people know about this resource. I mean, this is really incredible. The, the video was great. Donate, you can do that at the Give, Send, Go fundraising page forward slash Austin 17 House. You can send a prayer message if you want. You can share it with the people that you know. Help support this amazing endeavor. Uh, Lindsay, are there any last things that you would like to say to the audience before we get back to our daily grind? Um, I I mean, like like you shared, it's always great to, you know, come and, and check the place out. Again, we're open. We love giving tours. Um, and if you are like, wow, I really am interested in learning more or getting involved, like how can I get involved? Uh, we are we look for the three T's, which is time, talent, or treasure. So if you have time on your hands and you want to give your time to volunteer, you're welcome to. Talent is maybe you have, um, you know, experiences or maybe you're an art teacher and you want to, you know, show your talent and share it with the kids, and do an art class or treasure. I mean, you know, we're on Gifts and Go because we're trying to raise money to kind of continue to do what we're doing. And mm -hmm. while, you know, grants and things like that are great, um, really our heart is to be a community center that's 100% supported by our community. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we're constantly striving towards. And so um, giving to us doesn't give necessarily to a building or a business, like you're really giving and intervening in kids' lives that don't have anybody to intervene for them, like I shared, you know, we get a lot of referrals. We work with DCYF. We work with all of the state places because we're trying to take the burden off. They're so overwhelmed and overburdened. And so in order for us to do that, you know, we have to be able to pay the, right. the people, but also, you know, provide the food and the resources that we can. Um, and so, yeah, if you would like to get involved, time, talent, or treasure is accepted here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Lindsay been great to get to know you in this. I think what you guys are doing is amazing. Um, being probably less than a couple hours away from you guys, next time I'm up in the area, I'll probably try to make a pit stop over there and check it out because it sounds absolutely amazing. And watching the video is super cool too. Um, great to hear from you. And uh, for all of you that are watching, have watched all the way to this end, 
feel free to jump on their Give, Send, Go page, go to any of the resources that Lindsay provided, website, et cetera, share, let people know about this great endeavor and um, keep shining brightly as we say. We'll see you on the flip side.